yeah, a few years ago, uh, we were flying out of, myself and three of my kids were flying out of London Gatwick to go back to the States. It was springtime. In fact, it was Easter weekend. Uh, we don't really pay attention to holidays, and Easter is like, I think, the most heavily traveled weekend in Europe. And we, uh, a couple of weeks before the flight, I called them and said, asked them, you know, just to talk about the flight and make sure all or everything was in place. And they said, oh, we've been trying to get a hold of you. Your flight has been put up a couple of hours. And it was just as uh, Mr. Bush was taking us into Iraq. I mean, talk about stupid ideas, but I don't think the Bush family is noted for their intelligence, but you know my opinion on that. But uh, at any rate, we get to Gatwick, and there are great, huge, long lines. And I am a one-pass member, so I walked to the front of the line uh, with my kids, and they said, okay, we have two people in this reservation. I said, yeah, but we have two reservations. I said, somehow the reservations got split. And so they're looking through things. And I mean, and Gatwick was a, a madhouse. The Continental Line was huge. And their tempers were flaring, and so I, they said to me, is it okay with you if you get split if you don't sit with your children. And the kids were like 9, 10, 11, something like that, maybe a little less. And I thought, I said, well, I don't know what you're talking about. They said, well, if we upgrade you. I said, I will withstand the discomfort of being that far away from my children, and I will take the upgrade gladly. Thank you. They can visit me, or I will walk back and visit them if that's not allowed. And my kids are good kids. They're pretty mature kids. And we got to the waiting area, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited, and then we waited some more. Then we waited some more because uh, everybody boarded but us. And uh, I walked up, and people were yelling at these gals like they do, like there's something these girls can do about it, these women, excuse me. And I walked up, and I said, well, better you than me. And they said, what I said, I empathize with what you're going through with these people when there's not much you can do about this situation. Uh, the war moved things around. The, the start of the war, the invasion, uh, and Easter, and so this woman looked and she said, "We're looking for two seats." And I said, "No, sorry, the reservations got split. We're actually looking for four seats." And this lady looked at the other lady. And she said, "Oh, do it." She said, "What?" She said, "Do it, all four of them." And the woman said, "All four of them?" She said, "Just do it." She said, "Mister, you're going to be really." happy that you were just nice to us, that you empathized with us. And I said, I am. And why? She said, yeah. So they upgraded me, Mia, uh, Naomi, and Ian all to business class, uh, all the way across the ocean, all the way to Houston from Gatwick. And uh, it was first class service. The kids were in heaven. The stewardess said to me, look, if these kids aren't good. And I said, well, I have more on writing on this than you do. My wife has written a book called Rule Number One, Mom Has Fun. And if they don't look good, if they aren't good, it looks worse for us than it does for you. At the end of the flight, the stewardess came up and she said, thank you very much. She, she said, you have very polite kids. She said, and it's odd. She said, I've been flying this route for 13 years. And she said, this is the most polite business class I've ever had to deal with. www.micpeakperformance.com